A new study came out recently showing a super simple stretching technique that can help you build more muscle. Now, instead of dragging this out, I'm just gonna tell you the protocol right away. All you have to do is hold the stretch position on any exercise for 20 seconds at the end of each of your sets. And that's it. Now, of course, it's not that simple and there are two reasons why you might not wanna do exactly that and might want to adjust things a little bit to personalize it to your needs. So that is what we're going to explore today. But first, do you currently stretch? And if so, do you do it before or after workouts? Do you do static stretching or do you do something else altogether? Let me know in the comments section below. So the study took a group of subjects and put them onto the leg press calf phrase like this and the seated calf phrase and had them doing four sets of eight to 12 reps done with a controlled lowering phase, just like this, a slight pause in the stretch and pushing straight up. All sets were taken to failure at around eight to 12 reps with good technique. So it's a pretty standard muscle building protocol overall, but here's where it gets interesting. After taking the sets to failure at eight to 12 reps, the subjects would lower back down into the stretch position and hold this position here for 20 seconds on one side only. This kind of study design is really cool because it accounts for things like genetic variability between each individual. The results show that while both sides did increase in size, there was more growth on the stretching side than on the non-stretching side. Now that's pretty cool, and it's also a really non-invasive way to add in a little bit of extra stretching into your workouts. I know for many people, once you've finished your workout, the last thing you want to do is add in another 10 or 15 minutes worth of static stretching at the end of the workout. So if you could get similar benefits and maybe even more gains by stacking it into your workouts, well, that sounds like a pretty good idea. This isn't a brand new technique. Dante Trudell would use it in his dog crap training back in the 90s, and it's something that John Meadows was a huge fan of as well. But there are two things to keep in mind if you're thinking of starting this. First of all, this type of work is extremely fatiguing because you're not just holding a stretch, you're holding the stretch in a loaded position at the very end of a set after you've already hit failure. That's a lot of work and it can create a lot of extra fatigue and soreness that you probably could have avoided by not doing this protocol. When you compound that across multiple sets, on multiple body parts, on multiple exercises, multiple times a week, that can start to accumulate a ton of extra fatigue. And we don't even know that the gains you're gonna get from this stretching protocol are going to be any better than just doing a couple of extra sets. <sighs> so instead of doing, say, three sets, each one with the stretch, we might just do four or five sets, each one without any stretching. I really wish the researchers added that in as a variable for their study design as well. Although, that would probably mean they would need to use subjects who have three legs. Second of all, the study design itself wasn't perfect because they did use untrained beginners for this protocol who might respond a little bit differently to more intermediate, to advanced, to regular gym goers. And when you zoom in closely and look at what actually changed, the gastrocnemius, or this big muscle that most of us associate with calves, that didn't see much growth whatsoever. Whereas this muscle underneath, which is the soleus, which is more of a postural muscle that lies deeper to the gastrocnemius, that did experience some change in size. I'm not really sure why this is the case. It just adds in a little bit of extra variability and makes us a little bit less cut and dry of this is definitely what you need to do. So should you start doing this? While this is still open to a fair bit of interpretation, I still think it has a lot of merit and here's why. While there wasn't any direct testing done on actual range of motion and flexibility, we can look at other research which indicates that training in this way should give us some pretty similar improvements to range of motion and flexibility as static stretching done outside of the training window. So at the very least, if you're not doing any stretching right now whatsoever, this would be a really simple way to start adding some in to give you some benefits and maybe even boost your gains a little bit more as well. This 20 second stretch protocol also matches up really neatly with what the research shows to be the minimum effective dose to improve flexibility, with five minutes being all you need to do to see improvements. So in order to hit that minimum duration of five minutes with 20 second stretches, you're looking at 15 total sets, which matches up really neatly with typical recommendations for volume overall. Now, because of how fatiguing it is, I'd be a little bit more mindful about how much you do with this each week. So instead of doing the protocol on the entire body, I'd pick just two or three body parts at a time to do this full protocol on where you do the stretching after every single set. Another alternative would be instead of doing it after every single set, doing it after just one set on each exercise that you do. If you did it this way, you might be able to get away with doing it for every single body part and not just two or three body parts. It really comes down to what you're after. If you're looking at ticking absolutely every single box for muscle building, you might be better off doing it after every single set on every single exercise for that body part. Whereas if you care a little bit less about the overall muscle building, what it uses more is more of a, a stretching and flexibility thing, then maybe just doing the one set for each body part or one set after each exercise would be more than enough. 
Now, static stretching a muscle is only part of the equation and doesn't completely paint the picture on what's really going on in the brain in response to stretching. To learn a little bit more about how to improve range of motion and flexibility without stretching, check out this video over here. Now, in light of the new research and a better understanding of all this stuff from my part, I don't agree 100% with everything I was saying in that video, but I still think it's a great start point to start to understand the role the nervous system plays in helping you unlock your body.